Should I cover the to go live? Yeah, you want to live? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was trying to get Maya or Styles P or Ingrid Newkirk. So today, John Sally. Let's see, John. All right. Well, I can just talk a little bit about this. The short one today. We're going to put all of the different talks in different categories. Yes. Like some people are interested in Snoop Dogg and Jermaine and Shakti and you know the hip hop museum. And then I'll do a lot of the younger artists as well. And that'll all go in. No doubt that will have the largest following. And then especially when we turn it into a podcast. Then everyone will see all of those stars and hear their stories. But then there's the other ones who I'm interested in saving their lives. Yes. And so the cultural talks are one thing. The talks about this book and in general about nutrition and about a post-pandemic lifestyle... They're a smaller audience, but I think it's a greater service. I can't move without that. That's really my purpose, not to tell Snoop Dogg's story. Although, I like hearing it because it refreshes my memory. Eric Sermon brought me to a, like, a moment, right? There was a moment with Eric Sermon. I was like, oh shit, Eric Sermon made so many great records. So today, I just want to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving. And the choice is, you know, in America, we have something called Thanksgiving. I'm talking to the three guys filming. And in Thanksgiving, we gather together and we share blessings and we count our blessings as a family. And it's a celebration. But because of COVID in America, it's so bad, they're asking you not to gather. They're asking people not to get together and to keep their distance, and to wear their masks, and wash their hands, and do all of the things that will save our lives. Now, although the death rate is going down, the number of deaths per day will range, start to range 2,000 per day, 2,200. It's going to start growing, and it has started growing. Thousands of people are dying every day. And with Thanksgiving coming and putting our families at risk, especially the seniors, and the young people are at risk. They don't realize it. They think, oh, I'm young. You're young and you could have a lasting and, and forever scar tissue on your lung. You could have scar tissue on your heart. You could have a circulation problem that will last you forever in your body. And we don't know how bad that is because they don't know. They don't know the answers. So I'm asking you to be careful this Thanksgiving protect your loved ones, and, and respect this last few months. I know a lot of people are against the vaccine, but uh, I feel like it's necessary. That's my opinion. Do what you want. I think that after a month or so, and we see, and not that a month will give us all the answers, but we don't want, uh, the, we need to control the, this virus and perhaps the vaccine is the best way. I don't want to give misinformation, nor do I want to fall into an argument with conspiracy theorists, but I will say that um, vaccines have worked in the past. I don't take a flu vaccine, it's not scary. I don't, I've never taken a flu vaccine. But I think the vaccine against this virus at this time may be necessary to control the number of deaths and the number of lasting um, forever um, the destruction on people's body that as far as we can tell some people are fucked up forever some people I was watching a doctor on TV yesterday who was 28 years old ran the marathon was in great shape and he could barely breathe and he said he thought he was going to die he survived but it's not a joke even for young people and of course we've lost a lot of young people as well alright I'm going to ask some questions today because I can't find my. I only wanted to find help people today. All the people who've written nice things for my book, my goodness, they should be on here. They've all written. Ingrid Newkirk is a hero. I don't know who knows Ingrid Newkirk. She's the founder of PETA. And um, P 
Peter's a long time organization, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. And then there's Alicia Silverstone, and then there's John and Sally, and there's Jermaine Dupree. I'm trying to find Styles P. This motherfucker, where is he? Styles P. But, you know, vegans, plant based people who are in hip hop, I'm going to get a lot of them. Because I think that people don't realize how many hip hop people have made the change. Because Styles P has a juice bar in Brooklyn. Who knows that? Look at that nigga, it's right there, see? This motherfucker giving out turkeys. I would give out turkeys too. Yo, yo. My man, could you call into my Instagram live? How do I do that, Uncle Russ? I'm on the aisle with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Wait. So, I'm, I'm really turning it into a podcast. I'm rehearsing. I did Snoop the other day. Good. I did Chuck D, I did Jermaine, I did a lot of people kind of rehearsing before I really launched. So, okay. but I wanted to call you because you're plant based, and I thought yeah. I seen when you I see you go live and you said something I thought was relevant. Like I've been plant based for 25 years, right? And of course, what well, I cheated before, you know, and I supported turkey giveaways, and I seen you doing that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of plant-based Nazis out here. They feel like, you know, you know, the idea is to give people some grace, you know, and if we can help people eat, of course, yeah. you know, we from the hood, we're not... Do Go ahead. I think, I think with me personally, from, um, I, I'll be plant-based seven years, probably on December 31st. Um, I, I probably, I, I plan, I will be plant-based until the day I die. But I come from poor people first, like, you know what I mean? I think most people are fortunate enough to live a plant-based lifestyle, haven't been in an economical situation that most people never have lived a plant-based lifestyle. Like, most people in the hood where I'm from or most impoverished neighborhoods don't think about plant-based lifestyles at all because plant-based lifestyle could seem very expensive if you haven't adapted to it and understand that and, and grasp the understanding and overstanding that um, maybe you have to sacrifice something else from your lifestyle. Like you might have to buy a couple less pair of Jordans or you might not get a Gucci belt that month or, you know, you might not take a trip. But I think when it comes to food and, and um, for me personally, I think God knows better than me, the creator, the ultimate higher power, whatever. I think, you know, meat's been on this planet a lot of years. Um I think the creator knew people would eat meat when he put it here. I think he foresaw, foresaw everything, so I believe it's your choice. But I think people who maintain a plant-based lifestyle shouldn't be so judgmental and negative to people who eat meat. And, and besides that, I do live a plant-based lifestyle, but I do not call myself a vegan. Like I, I, One day I do intend to fight for the animals and um, as passionately as I could um, on... I tell people, unfortunately, at this particular moment in my life, I am not as um, knowledgeable and emotionally in the right place to be like Dick Gregory's and those who came for me to fight both fights. I believe if my white vegans and my 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 vegans and plant-based people that aren't brown or black really need to look into the world of how black and brown people are treated, look at our neighborhoods. Look at the economy. Look at the social system, and um, like yeah. I would, I would have loved. Like I used to hit Peter and say, like even for me as a plant based person, I love what Peter does. I love what they stand for. I love what they represent, but they don't speak on for me. I'm not saying they don't, but they need to speak. They'll get a lot more black people being plant based and brown people plant based if they kind of rationed and understood the idea that. A lot of black people actually feel and get treated worse than animals in America. Like, and that's the reality that we don't talk about. And that becomes uncomfortable when you're talking about plant-based lifestyle, or like eating healthy. And I think if you're a plant-based person, before you even ask a person to be plant-based, you want to tell them, for me personally, because I'm out here in the trenches. I can't say the neighborhood you're at right or the next person's at or the next person's at, but I know the neighborhoods where I'm around I can't tell them to just jump the plant. So even as a plant-based person, 
if I know someone who eats steak or chicken, I tell them, hey, why don't you start eating grass-fed steak or chicken? Why don't you eat organic steak or chicken? And why don't you look up what steak or chicken does and just start investigating? I, I, I'm not judgmental because we all have flaws as human beings. Even if you're plant-based, something you do outside of eating is fucked up and out the box. Maybe not a lot. Maybe just a little bit, but you have no right to judge and cast stones at people. And the easiest way to convert people is to be kind, spread energy, understand the trials and tribulations they may be going through, understand they may not be in the same exact financial position you're in. They might not be in the same mental state position you're in. They may not be in a lot of places. So the best thing you could do is work with overstanding, understanding, care, and say, hey, all right, if you're hungry, and I can feed you when you want to eat. If you don't eat plants, I'm going to go, hey, I'm not going to feed you. I'm going to feed you. But I'm going to tell you, hey, I wouldn't eat that. I don't eat it. Here's why I don't eat it. Here's what works for me. And I think you got to come from a position of what works for you and lead by example instead of being judgmental. That's that's just me. That's because I'm out here where they don't, you know, where they, where they don't really see. You, you that know? come out of the Bible and the Quran and the Torah, my nigga. That comes out of the Yoga Sutras. That comes out of all the spiritual texts, which you said, everything out your mouth. So you say that's me because you're not heavy-handed? That's what I always say when I think about hip-hop, how conscious it is. You know, I'm going to spread this. It's not going to be just, you know, me talking to you, but I'm going to spread it. What you're saying is so beautiful because, man, first of all, black people are suffering in this country. And I love Peter as well. I, everything you said, I can't even say it better. I love Peter. Uh, Activists are, though, let me just say one thing. Activists in general who are going out for any kind of compassion, they recognize more than the next man the suffering of other people and the suffering of... But they still may be only focused on animals and act as if people... They may, they're more likely to vote to support the growth and, you know, and fighting discrimination for black people and for other people who are marginalized. So they're more likely... But sometimes you're looking at them and you're like, do you realize that everybody brown in this world is poor? In this world, not only in the whole world, white supremacy just... And you're sitting there as a white person fighting for animals and ignoring the suffering of black people. Or, or doing less than you could. And you don't realize how, how a black person may see you as being uh, insensitive. You know, and I'm not saying even at... You know, I, I understand, but I, at the same time, they got to understand, too, why that sensitivity comes. So what you said is beautiful, man, and nobody else say it. You know, black people, but we know, but say something, we're three times more likely to be uh, plant-based than our white counterparts. That we figured yeah. out how to eat plant-based cheaper. That's not really yeah. expensive. So without being judgmental, you can tell your friends that, you know, there's ways around this shit. You know, if yeah. you... It very much is. I mean, I think it all starts with, I think, with, um, um, like, people ask me, and I, I tell people, like, I don't, I became a vegan by mistake. I was a vegetarian. I went on a three-week cleanse. Um, I was a vegetarian for 10 years. The Thanksgiving of 13, I ate turkey, like, every year. Since 03, I, I was a vegetarian, but every Thanksgiving, I broke bread with my family. Thanksgiving of 13, I didn't feel well. And then I said on a, um, New Year's Eve, I would go on a three-week cleanse. I just never went back. And my, my transition into plant-based is more spiritual cause than, than health-minded cause, to be honest with you. And it's hard to explain that to people. I, I'm Because I'm from where I'm from, I've had a bad temper, anger issues, chemical imbalance. Fortunate enough, I was able to make money in hip-hop, move to the... You know, I've lived in rich Carlton's, wealthy neighborhoods, buy Whole Foods and Miss Greens, and I start to see a difference in how people shop, and I felt like the food I was eating was part of the chemical imbalance. And then I just didn't want to be mad all the time anymore. I didn't want to be an angry black man who would do something angry to another black person. I didn't want to be an intelligent black man who kept doing stupid things because of my ego and pride. So I knew that was eating animal that that was doing that to me specifically. I can't speak on everyone else, but I knew for myself that somehow the animal I was eating was throwing the energy back at me and making me a little more, you know, 
in balance than I, I wanted to be. So after after a few weeks on a cleanse, I just didn't want to go back. And then after a few months, I actually I was getting high in my house one day. A bug flew by me. I went to swat the blood, went to swat the bug, and I couldn't because I had respect for the bug's life. And that was a place I've never been at in my life before. So just being in that place, it was an awkward moment for me by myself. I found a whole new respect for life beyond human life. So sounds weird to people, but I just won't eat a cow because I look at a cow how I look at a dog. I look at a chicken how I look at a dog. I don't tell, I'm not saying you have to or anyone else has to or anyone out there hearing, but that's how I look at it. So that's why I will not eat an animal. I'm, I'm not, you know, but I'm not going to knock people who do eat animals. I will tell them. Stop, you know, stop. Can we... Everybody. Could we, like, when you see people who are really angry and they're fighting, they say it's a dog and a bird are the same, the suffering of sentiment beings is the same, and then they get angry and they go out in the war. That's how wars start. Like, Krishna told Arjuna, Arjuna said, I want to go pray because I don't want to judge them. He said, go chop them niggas' heads off. That's what God told the warrior, to go and chop their heads off. So we, <clears throat> there's a bridge builder, there's a compassionate way of, of expressing things. And there's a say for me, because the yogis would say, and Christians would say, it's not judgment, it's discernment. Like you make a choice for yourself. So I'm not judging you, but I'm making this choice. Your compassionate yeah. choice, God, God favors you for a compassionate choice. I mean, that's just in every scripture. It's nothing new. So when you say it's just for me, it's just for me. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to fuck people over. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be angry. I'm not. Gonna... All those choices are ones that are recommended for those people who want peace in their lifetimes as well. So you're making beautiful choices, man. It's from your heart and the fact that you won't judge or put heavy weight on somebody else. That's beautiful. They can't, you know, and, and you don't have, and you don't have to take it to no extra level. Just by example, it's beautiful. So. I appreciate. I seen you. You know, I, don't, I, you know, I fucked with you on Instagram. I watch you, so I seen you talk about the turkey. And I was like, you know, if I was, you know, right now I'm not in the hood. I'm right now. I'm in and so a lot of, a lot of uh, Thanksgiving. I gave out turkey, but this year I'm in Bali. Y'all niggas got very COVIDy right there right now. I'm supposed to be there right now before I take my kids away, but I'm not there right now. Uh, but it's, it's like just the fact. That you were going to give out turkey made me want to call you. I call, oh, yeah. And also, I got Ingrid, and I got Alicia Silverstone, some of the white V's. But, of course, I got Jermaine Dupree. I got to get Maya. She called me back. I missed her. I got John Sally. I need you to give me a quote for my book. You can say it. Okay. Whatever you want. Just text it to me, and I want to put it in okay. there. Because this book behind me, you know, I want to save people's lives. One of the things I want to do. And it's a little bit like I wrote The Happy Vegan. Niggas read it was mad at me. <laughs> they read the book, The Happy Vegan. I said it as nicely as possible. You know, if you say, no, thank you, I'd rather not, people get mad at you. So, oh, now pig feet ain't no good for you. Like, you'll literally go to somebody's crib and they start getting mad at you because you don't want to eat their food. For sure. So I'm trying to write it as nicely as possible, but, you know, it's a heavy-handed thing for them to realize their lifestyle is killing them. And everybody dying. How about this? This is something you can say nice as you can say. They're still going to get mad. Everybody dying is from pre-existing health conditions. And almost yeah, every one of those pre-existing health conditions is their diet. I, I totally agree. And I think that's why this part is the most major, most important um, fight we have. I think um, a lot of people often ask me, if this is the most gangster shit you could do, to be honest. Like, eat well and survive. Like, survival is the key to... I don't care what it is. Like, it's the most gangster shit you could do. It's the most American shit you do, could do. It's the most righteous shit you could do. It's the most intelligent shit you could do. It's a lot of shit. The most, the most shit you could do is with just eating healthy because I, I believe with that, it leads you, like, you know, um, as you were saying, there's so many different groups in this world, and I think we get caught up in, um, but what I do, that's why I say I'm in no, that's why I tell people, I say, hey, I'm not a vegan. I just eat plants. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, um, I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what your practice is. I want you to feel well. I want you to be well. We're not going to agree on everything. We're not going to disagree on everything. I will never be the smartest. I will never be the dumbest. I will never be the richest. I will never be the poorest. Most likely, neither is anyone that I will ever connect with. So 
with that being said, is I think it's about remaining to be calm, spread good energy, and um, I think that's what the I think what's needed in the world, and especially at this time, is just a, a certain amount of healing, but also a certain a certain amount of being real about healing. So, if if, if we offend you with saying eat to live and eat healthy, we're sorry. But not that sorry, fuck off, and you'll understand. And pay attention. <laughs> I need you. And I don't know. Bandwagon, and you later, and we ain't gonna be mad at you. The bandwagon will still be there, but um, we just trying to. We, my biggest thing is um, and because even a poor white man, even a middle class white man, you're black right now. Even even if you're white and you're listening right now, if you're not rich white and your kids not in private school. Ask yourself, how much is the state fund for your kid to eat per day? How much is your kid eating for a day and is your kid healthy? Like, so, you know, this is most of the country. So even if you're white and you're middle class, you're a nigga right now. So hopefully you understand and pay attention that we all want people like likenesses and differences. A lot of us have different color skin, but a lot of us have two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two ears, two arms, two legs private part so respect the likenesses more than the non-likenesses and um let's make a better world for the kids they're not as stupid as we were in the past generations they're not as programmed there's too many mixed babies alive in the world today for racism that even exist so let it be need we need a whole bunch of programs new programs and that kind of starts with a clean body and a clean mind okay i'm gonna let you go let me just say one thing bro you like Speaking to you, man, like I said, I speak to, I've had relationships with, uh, you know, a lot of great teachers. You know, I, we all love, as a black community, we love Minister Farrakhan. And, you know, there's, you know, Deepak and Satkaru and, and, and there's all these great teachers from all these great religions. I, I was the chairman of the foundation, so I had rabbis and imams all over the world, hundreds and hundreds of them. And all of these preachers that we know that are famous, some of them, you know them. They can't give more wise words than you did. You know, that's what I love about hip-hop. The poets they look inside and they find heart to spit, you know, to say things that really, like, that's the gospel with everything out of his mouth. So thank you. <coughs> thank you for showing us again, you know, and I keep saying it, but, you know, and I think they know now. I think it's obvious. They used to hate us. They used to treat us like shit. You know, we from hip-hop. We know how they felt about us. and they. But, but when it comes back, we're not the angry ones that are part of this polarized society. He's not the angry one. He's the one who's open-minded. It's the real progressive that listen and don't judge. And then give advice as much as they say what they think God's directed them to do. And they hope that you may follow because they believe it's right. And that's it. They don't even yell. He's not even yelling at you. He, but every so often a little hip-hop, he said, but fuck off and you figure it out later. <laughs> fuck out of here and figure it out later. Styles P, thank you so much, bro. And send me, don't forget, send me something so I can include you in my book. I got you. I All right, you. peace. Now, how about that? Now, we don't have his video image, but you can hear him pretty clearly, right? That's Styles motherfucking P. That's Styles P. And what he said, everything out of his mouth was what I wanted to say today about the food. Make a choice. <laughs> To, to live longer and be healthier and happier. And, and that's it, you know. Um, the conversation with Styles P. Oh, Foxy. Foxy, sick in bed, taking COVID test. I love you. We'll speak when you're better. I'm sure you're okay. And I'm sure you don't have it. I'm praying for you. Um, so, uh, I'm going to talk to... Eric Sarmin's coming. Coming vegan, Eric? Is that what that means? Eric Sermon's coming vegan. I was a ever with Eric Sermon for hip hop. So genuine, so genuine, you know, so genuine. He's coming. What do you mean he's coming? Well, Eric Sermon, what do you mean you coming? You coming vegan? Styles P. Not, the, listen, listen. Uh, yo, Styles oh, P. Oh. Just, what do you say? Styles P. Just said some. Styles P says some shit. Yo, listen, I'm gonna tell you. This is the I know why I, I call. I came in today because my mother, she didn't cry. She said, "Eric, Russell Simmons changed my life 
from the conversation. I said, so what do you mean, Ma? He said, because he said that yoga and meditation, along with eating, will give you a new light. And she never heard like that before. You know what I'm saying? So she, 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 she got something from that. And she says, Eric, if I was you, take your ass to Bali. I'm like, <laughs> I'm hanging out, my nigga. You, I built a I house. Know. I know. I, I said, Ma, he's building another whole 45-room yoga um, hotel. And he says, Eric, when you want to come. Now, my other friend said, Eric, I traveled around the world. He said, there's no place prettier than where Russell's at right now. <laughs> about it. He been there. He said, you want to talk about, about, about India and talk about places to go to. He said, I've been around this world, around this world. There's no place prettier than where Russell's at right now. Well, I'm at right now, Eric, is Yoga Vegan Disneyland. I'm building this yoga school hotel that you said. I'm building a rejuvenation resort with cryotherapy. I want to build something people can come and reboot their life. And I want to teach teachers so they can teach the rest of the world how to do better. So that's just very important to me. That's like, you know. But anyway, I'm glad you heard Styles P because you see, that's what y'all do. As hip hoppers get older, because they're poets. The poets are always the leaders. They can hear. And they hear God whispering. And they say things that are so beautiful. The way he says, I'm not judging anybody else. But he said all the stuff about compassion. He said all the stuff about living longer. And he and what was he doing? He's going to give out turkey. He said, well, that's what they... Yes. I, got to, I got to meet people where they are. You can't tell them... What, you going to tell somebody who's hungry, don't eat a turkey? Fuck out of here. We have a turkey today. <laughs> my man bought turkeys. We're giving them out. Right, and right. My man right. bought turkeys. We're giving them motherfuckers out. And the idea that we have to be so angry and so polarized and so separate and so... Only my way. That's the whole world right now. But hip hop ain't that way. Everything he right. said was not that way. I love the fact that that juice bar, really, that he was able to transform himself and make hip hop heads be like, "Yo, I want to start juicing." Come on, Russell. You know that juicing doesn't sound doesn't sound hip hop. Juicing, like you juicing, like. <laughs> 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 but but he found a way. Because it makes sense. He showed people, watch me. Now, look at Styles P. I'm skinny. Watch my energy. Watch how I look. Look how I sound. Watch how I feel. Trust me, it's better for you. And he found the way to make the juice bar popular. It's really, I'm glad he's got that business in the hood and he's teaching people and he's a teacher. And he's, you know... You can't get, first of all, they can't give you nothing. People say, oh, I live in this and have that. You can only sit your ass in one seat at a time, no matter how rich you are. So Styles right. looks real comfortable in his seat right now. So He does. So that's, that's that. Eric Sermon, the conversation we had about all the hit records, you reminded me, it was so crazy. Like, I'm, I'm going to do a whole series of conversations. with. Nah, like you don't understand. People act like they didn't know me and you existed. Like, after that combo, they're like, Eric, did all those records? I'm like, damn, it took Russell's show for them to know, but you're right. And I see why you did it, because you're like, Eric, they don't know. And you was right. They didn't damn. know. Damn. Nobody Young knew nothing. people don't know. They don't know that Eric right. Sermon's iconic. What you did was, and, and the way you came up, and you came when everybody was just starting to catch on, and you, right. you really, and then you, like you said when you were with Will Smith, this is one of the things that you said, I was with Will Smith, I was with Houdini, I was on DMC, and I was on the tour, and they were all talking. And, they were, and then Aaron Will Smith got on the stage and said the number one album was EPMD. And you didn't understand. You didn't know what Billboard was. But your no, record Billboard. was the number one black album at right. that time. And here's the thing. Right. The hood always, no matter what, there's a lot of people walking around here who are real hip-hop heads. You say, who's your favorite rapper? They don't say Run DMC, the PC Boys, LL Cool J. They don't say... They don't say you know, whoever, the obvious, they don't say Eminem, they say, oh, UPMD. A lot of people say that. You know what I mean? Because they really have pop heads. And I that's know. beautiful. Because you made a mark. You made a real Okay, but mark. i tell you what, Russ, listen, I'm coming to Bali, so I'll call you let you know. Let me know when you're coming. I'll talk to you soon, big brother. Peace. I got you. One love. Peace. Love, love you. Love. Uh, Eric Sermon just called it out of nowhere. Uh, 
on my baby. Ruckus. Man, if that ain't DJ Ruckus, he could talk about a if he pick up. DJ Ruckus, man. You know that he is like the What up there is pretty motherfucker. I hate this nigga. He's so fucking pretty. <laughs> Uncle Rush pretty. went up. How you doing, bro? I'm wonderful, so, brother. How are you? It was just we just talking to Eric Thurman, right? You know that. So, but man, that's my Thurman that's my bro, and man. Styles P, huh? That's my bro, man. You know, I made a I made a record on a Boys in the Hood album with him in uh in in Atlanta with Dallas at Dallas Studio, like two thousand. I don't know what two three. You only fifteen, nigga. <laughs> I was. I, I, I was. Are you vegan? Are you vegan? I, I, I'm not, but I'm I'm uh, about seventy eighty percent like pescatarian. Right. Yeah. All right. I'm. A, I'm. I want you to read a chapter on fish when you fish. Not to be judgmental, but just yeah. read the chapter on fish in my book. You're going to be like, oh, my God. But yeah. you look good and you're happy. Where you at? Um, I'm Miami? actually in, Marth I'm in Martha's Vineyard right now with uh, with my family, man. My little my little nephew, Benjamin, right here. What, say what's up, Benjamin. That's what's up, Benjamin? Right there. <laughs> How you doing, yeah, sir? Man. He's good. So, you know, uh, for those who don't know, DJ Ruck is one of the premier. Like, we have... You know, they have dance DJs, and they become very famous. But then we got hip-hop DJs that play all over the world. He also plays with my brother, with Rev Run. Absolutely. And they, and they traveled around the world. And Ruckus is one of the uh, the top DJs in our in our space. You and, I guess, Cassidy. And there's a yes, sir. Really you know. M.O.S. Right, you know. Yeah. And, um, D, D Nice just became the most famous on the now. planet. I can't think. D Nice. Right. Yeah, yeah. man. There's, yeah, there's a few of y'all out there that really – Really got big followers, but play a lot of more commercial music. They're not, they ain't the stars of the music, like in some other people, they dance and play dance music. Right. You know, so you played yeah. in St. Bart for me a couple yeah. times. Yeah, oh yeah. We, Christmas we did, party. We didn't have some yeah. legendary, legendary jams, man. I miss St. Bart's, man. Yeah. I'm yeah, thinking but, about going and taking my kids this year. I'm going to see what they want to do. I've been talking to their mother and to them about what their plans are. If they go to St. Bart's, I'll go to St. Bart's. A lot of conversation about people going. And, huh? A lot of conversation about a lot of people going down there for New Year's this year. I know. Yeah, as the options uh, are a I lot slimmer the as they normally are. Yeah, the man. COVID though. Yeah, how no. It's gonna, it's how do you be... feel? Do you feel pressure? Well, you know, it's it's tough. It's really tough for us because you know what got cut out as a DJ. All of the our our tier, all of that work got cut out. So unless you are D nice, you you don't really have business right now. There's either the bottom tier, which is under us, that open and close for us at all the clubs. And then there's the top, top tier that happen to be able to probably just do business deals with brands and things like that because their followings and their things are so big, you know, Khaled's, whoever else, uh, Calvin Harris, et cetera, David Guetta. But for all our tier where we have to go perform to really make money, we're, you know, we're, we're in trouble. We're all out of luck until they find a vaccine or they fix it all until maybe April or May next year, possibly. They're saying that. They're saying that the vaccine, and you know, I mean, I don't, I'm not a, a conspiracy theorist. Sometimes mm. I'm not a conspiracy theorist and I'm proven wrong. Mm. I remember when Farrakhan said, they're giving you cocaine. <laughs> the government is giving you cocaine. I was like, you know, and I love Mr. Farrakhan. I said, uh, and then right not away, sure. the truth came out that they were yeah. giving us cocaine. Okay. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> yeah. And about 10 times that's happened in different efforts, you know, with the American government surprising me the shit that they're doing. So I never could put nothing past them. I but try I not would, to. I try not to like, this, oh, dismiss shit out of hand just because the news said it or just because cause there's a lot of stuff they've done to black people that we would never have believed yeah. that the never government believed, knew about I mean, it and did anyway. I mean, you're talking about it right now. We would have never believed that they were feeding us what they've been feeding us, you know, just to make a profit. And they have Ever. been the whole time. You would have never guessed. I was telling people there's 2,000 contaminants that are excluded from, from European distribution, mm -hmm. 1,800 of them are in American food. Mm -hmm. Just so, because people wanted to make, uh, because we, we are the ones that manufacture wheat the best, and so we wanted to make a profit off of it, so let's just make a stronger wheat and sell it to everybody. Now we have a gluten problem and all these, you know, it's, uh, people have been making profits over, over the health and, and the well-being of people for way too long, and we, we're catching a, 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 a reckoning of that right now, which is beautiful. But, here. I, I'm so uh, surprised but I'm always constantly surprised because you try to believe, you know, if you want to believe the best, you can. But then you, you find out the absolute truth that they really are poisoning you. 
that the American <laughs> Cancer Society on their website no, no, no. recommends you eat food that gives you cancer. <laughs> that the Diabetes Association on their website give you <laughs> food that cause diabetes. On yeah. the, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Like, they're just constantly poisoning you. And then mm. you wonder, the conspiracy is that they work with the, the pharmaceutical industry, that work yep. with the medical industry, and they're all mm. feeding each other. They mm -hmm. don't have to work together to mm. work together. Correct. Like, you know, if somebody does something right. that affects you in a positive way, you ain't got to call them. Mm. There has to be right. no secret meeting. Uh -huh. yep. Them motherfuckers just poison yeah. you. They got a big cycle of poison, yeah. and they're working together yeah. unintentionally. They don't have to have secret meetings. Yeah, just like but that, that, hit, that hidden us. that hidden handshake when you see like another brother walking by somewhere you don't see a lot, just like, hey, I'll see you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> they are definitely poisonous and we have to uh save ourselves. And it may yeah. not be a conspiracy as someone saying, but it's just working mm. out this way. Is that DJ mm. corrupt. <laughs> so yeah. but hey, Ruckus, it's such a pleasure speaking to you, man. Uh, maybe My I'll brother. see you in St. Bart. St. Bart's and or Bali, man. As soon as they open the borders, I'm coming to visit, man. Oh, I, I look forward to seeing you. Come back to Bali. Come fuck with me again. We had fun last time. We had such a great time, man. I'm, I would love to come back. But thanks for if having not, me, brother. I'll see you in New York. If you go through New York, I'll probably go through New York and stay about a week before yep. I go take my kids to St. Bart's if that's what I'm doing. Keep me posted All on right. the movement, man. Love you, brother. Be safe. Love you, too. Talk to you soon. Get past that. You got somebody as cool as DJ motherfucking Ruckus jump on and, and, and dropping pearls. Dropping pearls, DJ Ruckus. All right. So that's it. I'm going to go to yoga. I think. Uh, I'm praying for Anna. I see that Anna was back in the hospital. Let me see. I see if she's still on. I just want to ask her before I sign off. There she is. Make my sister, um, we as a community have prayed collective, our collective prayers. We hope help us somehow. Hey, but she's always just. Oh no! Now I lost you. Because she's so happy. People complaining. Rich. People. I don't know if you can hear I'm me. Engaged. Hopefully you can. I, mean, I didn't want to make. For some reason, this island on my. But everybody's, you know, everybody's suffering is different. I don't know what happened. People said, I'm behind these. But listen, if you can hear me, I'm else. doing fine. Excuse all of this. Don't worry behind, about this. You know, I just want to say that the people in Georgia, the I want y'all to vote. We're in a critical time right now. We have two senates that's open, two power, seats that's open, and we really uh, need people to vote. So, bring them through more difficult again, don't things. worry about this and what like, you I'm see. I just need y'all to go vote. Yeah. I'm definitely um, got my absentee ballot is at my house right now. So, as soon as I get out of this hospital, that's the first thing I'm going to do is vote. But her spirit is much greater than those people who have all this shit. She can't join. Okay. So, you know, stop complaining. Look at this little. I started to say, oh, God, there's Shana. Shana's in the house. Shayna, you're in the house. I have our creative director. We're launching an app soon. We're launching an app uh, to go along with the school, to go along with the rejuvenation, uh, to bring all of these things together because I'm not sitting here idle. People think I'm sitting idle in Bali. I'm building a whole, this will one day be a podcast. Right now we're just testing. But all of this will go together in Samadhi Circle will be a health and wellness and we'll export every bit of knowledge we have and we'll find broad ways to get out and it's the nutrition it's the, the the tools that some of them in my book for instance i talk about cryotherapy what's the hack get the ice bath what's the hack of you know or what what can we do that's cheaper if there's something expensive and what can we do that's cheap which is most of what we can do to save our lives is cheap my book has recipes that are cheap. Shana can't pick up. Shana, you're there. Just didn't want to pick up because she didn't want to be on camera. Uh, all right, so that's it. All right, so let me just close out. I'm going to class. What time is it, guys? Time for me to go to class, right? Maybe I'll just take Shana's class here. Yeah, we're filming. That's why she's here. We're filming for the app that we're going to launch. They're going to give people um, one of the many tools that I'm going to give people along with the launch of the book. But there'll be all of these things that we can do easily to change our lifestyle for the better. Because this is what we, this is the purpose. 
to change our lifestyles so that we can live in a post-pandemic society uh, healthy, not to have the pre-existing health conditions that are killing us because there'll be another pandemic, there'll be another set of, there'll be anything. You can catch pneumonia and you got clogged arteries, you're gonna die. You know, so we wanna fix these problems. We wanna heal ourselves as much as we can. So in the short term, uh, thank you for joining us. Have a beautiful day.